Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I thought I would do uh, an Edmonton Eskimos Commonwealth Stadium backdrop just to at least pretend like we're getting close and we're at the football game. So thank you very much for joining. We have 94 of us tonight. And uh, I appreciate you guys reading the rules. And most of you guys have muted yourselves, which is great. We don't necessarily want uh, background noise or kids running around and yelling. And uh, there's really no need to have your video on if you really want to have your video on. And you can, but I uh, think just preferred video off. And then near the end, we can look at uh, having video on and, and have a larger chat or questions or anything like that. So um, today's topic is building a successful high school program with the legendary Alberta coach, Dave Deluzio. But every headlining act usually needs a good opener. So we're actually going to have a quick opening act seven to 10 minute presentation on an exciting news that Football Canada came out with today. Football Canada launched uh, an app, a very in-depth app that allows you to essentially practice plan, share your drills. It's a large, huge database of different drills for every position. I'm not gonna talk a lot of great detail in it. I'm gonna let Corey do it. So uh, Corey, I'm not sure if you can join your, turn your screen on and join us. But the other side of it is he's gonna talk about football at home that's relevant right now that you guys can be sharing with your players. So there's a video database that has uh, different drills and such. So joining us today uh, in partnership with Football Canada is a company called New Era, which is out of Saskatoon and Football Saskatchewan has been using them for a long time. He's just gonna give you a quick little five, seven minute infomercial on what they've launched. I'm gonna send you the link after this meeting and you guys can check it out. It's free to check out. I think he said till essentially quarantine's over till the, sometime in June. And it's a really good opportunity to uh, be able to communicate with the athletes at this time. And then further, you can uh, really do practice planning with all your players and your coaches and everything. But Corey, if you could uh, take five minutes just to talk about what you've been working on the past few years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks a lot for having me on. Uh, just a little uh, quick uh, correction there. It's it's athlete era. I know the the new era athlete era sometimes it gets right. a little bit mixed up, but uh, it's all good. Yeah, we're a, we're a software company um, based out of Saskatoon here, and actually myself and a few others started the business, and we come from a background in sport football, and um, actually our educational background is in kinesiology and sports science. Um, and the mobile app and the software that we've developed here is about three years in the making. And um, we released kind of a pilot version last year um, that was used quite heavily uh, in Saskatchewan as well as a couple of other provinces. Um, and then we basically built on that and got Football Canada a little bit more involved um, as a partner. And we've co-launched with um, uh, the newest version of the mobile app um, that's available right now free to download and go on and use um, on the app store. And then we're gonna be releasing kind of the, an updated version for the fall season as well. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly touch on kind of the premise and the intent behind the app, as well as some of the other things that are upcoming um, for fall seasons. And then uh, just kind of discuss briefly the, the coach from home initiative that we're running right now with Football Canada. Um, but really the intent when we began designing the, the app and the resource was um, to help youth develop better football fundamentals. So uh, we kind of define youth as those before they get to high school. And really what the resource was designed to do was um, make sure those players can really uh, focus on getting good technical skill training um, prior to reaching the high school age. So when we built out the resource, we wanted something that uh, worked for the grassroots level because a lot of times you're dealing with coaches that have uh, very limited experience um, potentially in the sport of football, uh, especially when it comes to um, newer flag leagues that are starting up. And I think we can all attest to uh, being a head coach of a team, but kind of having to twist a couple arms for parents to get involved um, with coaching that maybe might not have that experience. So uh, we really wanted to lower the barrier of entry by having a really comprehensive resource uh, that parents due to football could pick up and feel empowered um, to be a good coach. And then another thing that we'll kind of touch on that pertains a little bit more to 
the more knowledgeable coaches, um, especially those once you get into the high school level, is just being able to efficiently communicate practice plans and drills and all those types of resources um, with your team. So, yeah, the app website here is just footballcanadamobile.com. Um, everybody can go there. It has the links. You can get it on both iOS and Android. Um, and as Taylor alluded to, we're just doing a kind of a free early launch promotion right now, and everybody can utilize the mobile app um, for free until the end of June. Um, so just to get into it a little bit in terms of the actual features and content within the mobile app. Um, so we have about 250 drills in there right now, and every drill comes complete with a diagram, um, detailed description, coaching points, and variations. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very detailed content, um, that we have within the mobile app. And then one thing that's unique to it as well is that, um, when you get into the app and create your team, you'll be able to select, um, the age group and then the type of football you're actually doing, whether it's tackle flag, um, one of the football Canada programs, and then all the resources within your library are actually filtered, uh, to that specific age. So it's not just, uh, a content blast here's everything but um, here's kind of the best resources that are most specific to what you're doing and then we also have a variety of practice plans in there um, and we're releasing new content by the week we have a lot of people working in there right now um, putting together putting together resources so um, in addition to the drill library you can also find a lot of pre-designed uh, built out practice plans in there um, within the resource. So yeah, basically the main focuses were, we really wanted to centralize all that content. So right now we have drills and plans, and then we're also releasing example playbooks. Um, Football Canada rule book will be in there later this year. Uh, so really your one-stop shop to access mobile resources. And then some of the stuff that we're building out a little bit more now as well. Um, for the more experienced coaches is some of this content sharing and communication piece. So you can actually schedule um, events once you've created your team and invited others to join you in the app. So you can actually schedule your practice plan. Um, it sends a push notification out to everybody and then you can assign your practice plans uh, from the plan library right to it. So then uh, whether it be a parent or player at home, they get that push notification, they can go right in and view the detailed breakdown of the plan with, with all the drills. Um, and that's essentially what we're utilizing as a little bit of a coach from home solution for those that can't run, can't run programs this spring. Um, and then obviously the mobile piece, we wanted to make sure it's accessible, whether you're in your car kind of prepping 10 minutes before practice or you're on the field. We had a lot of coaches say that like kids would go for a water break, pull out the practice plan on the phone, and like check a couple of the coaching cues, uh, for the drill and then go out and run it. So, uh, I mean, focus on accessibility there as well. Um, so I encourage everyone to get in, check it out. Um, again, just a little bit of the coach from home initiative this spring it's essentially you have pre-designed resources in there you can get uh, players and parents on your team to join within the app and then assign drills and plans to them uh, to do as, as kind of homework if you will on a weekly basis and it's really focused on still like technical skill development so it's not um, do 10 push-ups and 10 sit-ups here's a home workout it's actually focused on allowing parents to get out uh, in the backyard with their kids if they have a football and actually work on uh, position specific drills. Um, and then just the last thing I'll touch on a little bit too is um, these are all the organizations that we're working with currently that kind of piloted the app in some capacity last year as we expand it. Um, and then another kind of development we're excited about is we're working with USA Football as well, um, managing their mobile learning resource. So basically, Football Canada and USA Football have came to a content sharing agreement. So this fall within the app, um, coaches will be able to access all of USA Football's uh, skill development progressions and drills as well. And um, they have a lot of really comprehensive drills and break down all the skill stuff in, in very good detail. So there'll be a lot of added value there as well. Um, and then if you're looking for uh, more information on how to 
uh, actually implement the resource. You can download it right from the web website. We just have this implementation guide that talks you through um, how to set it up and create your team and get people in the app uh, to access all the content. So yeah, I think that's about Perfect. it for my time. Yeah, thanks, Corey. That was uh, that was about 11 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing I really liked about it, I know this is a high school topic tonight, but the the ability to show the techniques and uh, at practice or send it at home, and you can send your receiver the exact drills and how to run routes or your own line the technique. You can have a tablet on the practice field and be showing them, you know, the proper techniques of it. I think it's worth checking out. It's free right now. Um, uh, and you have probably a little bit of extra time at home to check out certain things. So please take a look at that. Uh, he will, um, Corey will be doing a more in-depth um, presentation on that and how to incorporate that into your practices during another session, which I don't have it in front of me. Corey, do you know your date that you're doing? Uh, I believe it's, yeah, I believe it's May 6th is the date. It's on the list and he'll be using that app and showing you how to use it and, and optimizing your practice planning. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, Coach Deluzio, if you could join us, uh, share your screen and uh, your beautiful face, we'll get started. Just a reminder, if you guys have any questions, you can write it in the chat on the side or bottom, wherever it is on your screen. Feel free to text me if you want. I did hit record at the start, so we will be recording this. Uh, I'll be posting on a Google Drive, uh, and I maybe I think Coach Deluzio maybe will share his PDF with us after. See, I'm putting him on the spot a little bit, but... We of can, course. Uh, of course. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll post Coach Delucio's PDF on that Google Drive after. Uh, we're right at 100 participants. Uh, Coach, it's all you. He said he'd be about 60 to 75 minutes. We'll take questions throughout and or at the end. So it's all you, sir. Thank you. All right, I'll just get set up here. Uh, thanks for everybody for joining. It's uh, really. Uh, humbling that so many people would, uh, uh, during your, your time here, would spend a, a Thursday night and uh, kind of listen to what, uh, what uh, I want to talk about. Uh, thanks uh, to Taylor, uh, uh, especially, and, uh, and of course, Tim at Football Alberta for uh, all they do, but uh, for setting up these um, sessions for coaches, I think is, uh, is fantastic. And uh, um, I know we're all anxious to to get going and get back and uh, see our, uh, you know, see our players and, and see our kids. If you're a teacher, see our students, but uh, you know, obviously we got to wait till everything uh, calms down and um, you know, without having any, any sports uh, to watch uh, obviously the real heroes are uh, those doctors and nurses on the front line uh, going into the hospitals and uh, you know, and dealing with this. So uh, they're obviously to be uh, commended and, uh, uh, in our in our thoughts and uh, and prayers, uh, I'm going to talk about our, our football program uh, here. Um, I'm very very lucky. Uh, uh, well, not number one to be teaching and uh, coaching at Notre Dame, but uh, I'm really lucky to be working with uh, the coaches that I have on staff, the support, and I'll talk more about that as we go on. But uh, most importantly, it's the kids. Like you could uh, you know you could have whatever program and whatever thoughts you want about how to run any organization, but it's, uh, it's all about the people. And, uh, uh, you know, we're really blessed here to have kids that really uh, buy in and uh, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to coach them. So uh, I'm going to go on with the presentation. A lot of these slides are taken from um, just uh, presentations uh, that I would do uh, to our players. Uh, so I'll go through them as, uh, as we uh, go here, if there's any questions, um, um, you know, just uh, fire away. I'm not, uh, Taylor will guide me through uh, uh, through that. Uh, so just uh, uh, some quick background uh, on myself. Uh, I wasn't going to put my background, but then I, I thought I, I, I would, especially for the younger coaches, because uh, I think it's important on where you kind of get your feet wet in uh, in football and uh, and where you get started so uh, you know way back when in the in the dinosaur ages uh, I played uh, uh, two years of uh, bantam football for the hilltoppers and uh, uh, way back then that's that's all there was there wasn't uh, you know Pee Wee or Adam or anything like that it was right to uh, bantam and then um, was able to uh, go to uh, St. Francis and play for um, you know 
the legendary, and he's a true legend, uh, Gary to the demand, and also uh, played for Joe Stambini. And I knew at a young age that I wanted to be a, a phys ed teacher. I knew I wanted to be a coach. So it was, uh, it was good to see the two different styles there. Uh, Mr. Mann was very uh, laid back. He was uh, very calm, where uh, Joe Stambini was, uh, you know, especially – at that time, um, he was uh, just uh, just a fireball and intense and get right into your face. So it was uh, it was good for me to see those uh, two different styles there. Uh, and then I was lucky enough to play football at U of C uh, for uh, for four years. And the first year uh, was actually uh, when Tony Fasano took over. Uh, for Peter Canellan, who took a year sabbatical. And uh, um, so that, that was an awesome experience. And then I got uh, Coach Canellan, uh, another, uh, you know, obviously legend uh, for the last uh, three years and uh, learned tons from, uh, from, both those, uh, from both those guys. Um, you know, Coach Canellan was, uh, you know, very organized, very uh, meticulous. And uh, I started to see um, just the importance of culture and, uh, and what that meant uh, even way back then. Uh, my practicum year, my student uh, teaching year was uh, the first uh, real year um, that I, I coached. So I, I stopped playing in, uh, in 95 and uh, um, I coached D-line at, uh, at St. Francis. Uh, Joe Stambini was the head coach. Uh, we won provincials that year and it was, uh, it was just a great, great learning experience uh, to be able to, to coach a position. Uh, again, very lucky. I was hired, uh, you know, as a 23 year old, um, kind of right off the street, uh, to go to Bish McNally. And, uh, the first couple of years there, I was defensive coordinator, uh, for, uh, Carl Grattan. And he's, uh, he's a, a principal now in the Calgary uh, Catholic board. But what uh, I'm really indebted to Carl for is he didn't really tell me what to do as a D coordinator. He let me fail. Uh, I still remember my first couple practices having skelly practice and, or, you know, skelly in practice and dropping like nine or 10 guys. And, cause I thought that's what you do. And I had no idea what I was uh, doing. And he really allowed me to, uh, uh, to kind of figure things out on my own. And uh, that was fantastic. Um, in 1998, I, I, uh, I became a head, head coach and then um, you know, all the way through at, at Bishop McNally. And uh, uh, that was an awesome experience there. Love the kids there, uh, the coaches. It was a real good experience. Uh, just a little different than, um, you know, coaching at St. Francis, just with the number of uh, players that we, uh, that, that we had. Uh, in between there, uh, 2003 and 2004, I was head coach of the Calgary Colts, and uh, that was, uh, you know, an amazing experience. Uh, you know, I tell this every time I do a, a clinic session. Uh, uh, you know, the Colts at that time were um, were struggling, and uh, uh, first game we won our first game, and I thought this isn't going to be too bad, and then uh, lost 15 straight after that, and got my ass fired. But uh, uh, I never regretted uh, doing that, and it was, uh, you know, ex experience. Uh, coaching at that level uh, in 2005 uh, came over to um, to Notre Dame and uh, have been here you know ever since and uh, you know also in the spring uh, was a, a, a full-time uh, coach with the uh, with the midget uh, uh, hilltoppers um, and that was an awesome experience working with uh, a lot of uh, uh, did different coaches and experiences and, and working with kids at the community level was really good for my uh, development. So that, that's kind of my coaching history in a, in a nutshell there. So I've had a wide range of, uh, of, uh, of experience that kind of helped, uh, help shape me through. Um, what I want to uh, uh, talk about now, my screen kind of freezed here, sorry, is um, as a young coach, um, you know, go to, I would go to clinics and, uh, uh, you know, just like uh, all of you go to clinics and, uh, you know, coaches back then, and just like they do now, would talk about uh, mission statements and philosophies and core values and, and things like that. And that is something that I never really paid too much attention to as a young coach. I thought it was all about the X's and O's and, um, you know, just having some great defensive scheme and um, to, uh, would conquer all. And, the older I get, uh, the more that I, uh, I, I, that I try to learn, um, the more that uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, your philosophy and uh, kind of your, your core values are the most important things. Um, the X and O's is obviously important, but 
it's, uh, you know, it's what you're selling to your players and obviously <laughs> to your parents. Um, kind of the purpose of your program. Um, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, a big thing is, uh, you know, defining success uh, with your team. Is it uh, the scoreboard? Is it stats? Is it just, uh, 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 you know, a gut, uh, a gut feeling that you, uh, that, that, that you have? Um, so, um, you know, basically I think coaching is, uh, you know, taking your players from a starting point and, uh, you know, kind of making them the best they can be. Uh, you know, you've heard this before, the best versions of yourself. Um, you know, and how do you, you know, decide what success is for different type of players? You know, your, your, your top all-star player, what does success look for him uh, compared to uh, kind of the guys on the bottom of the roster? So through all that and through looking at other places, kind of uh, came together with a, with a mission statement. I won't go through all of it here, but uh, basically what we want to do here at Notre Dame is we want to develop our, our players, uh, develop them physically, academically, socially, and, and obviously spiritually is, uh, is a big part of, uh, you know, being part of a Catholic school. Um, a big thing for us, and I'll talk more about it later, is we want to have an atmosphere where uh, everybody can be successful. We all want to coach those, uh, you know, those all-stars and those future CIS players and the kids that make us look really, really, you know, good on the sideline. And I've had a you know, a ton of those type of kids come to our program. But, um, you know, ultimately what's important for us is the bigger picture, uh, the, the life lessons. And we're all football coaches here, um, you know, not to, um, you know, say anything bad about other sports because, you know, other sports are great too. But uh, there is nothing like football. There is, you know, your, your football team uh, looks a lot different than, uh, you know, a basketball team would or a soccer team would. A lot of those teams – you know, the athletes kind of all look the same. In football, you got all kinds of kids from all kinds of backgrounds and body sizes, and, and you're going to get, um, you know, kids that would normally never be um, together uh, a chance to, you know, achieve some, uh, uh, some, uh, some great, great things. Um, a big belief that we have here is that kids that uh, are in our program are going to be better and more successful in life because they played football uh, here for us. That's a big part of what we uh, what we do. Obviously, we want our kids to uh, graduate, and and we want to have lifelong relationships with these uh, kids. We're only um, this upcoming year will be our 16th year, uh, so you know we're 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 fairly new. But uh, you know it's just great seeing and hearing about uh, the players that played you know, 10 years, five years ago, 15 years ago, uh, that's, uh, that's very, very important. Um, other things that we've kind of developed as we go on here is uh, our kind of pillars of excellence. And uh, again, anything that you have is, is great. It, it, it's good for your kids. It's good for your program. These are the things that we kind of uh, came up with for our kind of pillars of excellence. So great effort, being a great teammate, uh, coachability, attention to detail and doing your job. So those five, uh, we call them pillars of excellence, but those uh, five uh, traits or core values are things that uh, we will talk about uh, uh, as much as we can. And that's the thing with any philosophy. It's, uh, it has to be uh, like a living type uh, action. It can't be something you talk about at the start of the year and then you don't, you don't mention it any, uh, any, any more. Other things that, uh, that we try to, um, you know, talk about is uh, uh, the old win, uh, you know, mantra. Uh, and I read a book by Lou Holtz uh, way back at the uh, at the Bishop McNally days, and it just, uh, you know, win, uh, you know, uh, what's important now. And that's something, again, that goes back to kind of attention to detail, um, something that, um, you know, really – focusing on uh the present and 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 we're we're a program and and, you know maybe it's easy for me to say say this and uh you you know you may be thinking that i'm full of crap here but uh, you know we're not going to talk about uh you know winning and losing i'm not going to start our preseason meeting and uh and talk to the kids about um you know, a championship or, you know, beating this team or, or that team. Uh, we really try to just focus uh, one day at a time and uh, just try to worry about uh, uh, our, ourselves. Uh, every year we'll also have um, a season theme um, to kind of uh, tie everything together. Um, 
you know, last year was uh, uh, Everything Matters. Uh, the year before it was All In. Uh, just some type of uh, a buzzword to get um, to get everybody uh, kind of connected as well. And again, it, it's just a word unless you talk about it and and describe about it. Um, you know, other things. Um, uh, when we talk about our, our game goals, uh, we're really focused uh, on, on ourselves. Uh, we're really focused on our own performance. Uh, uh, you know, obviously we, we scout other teams and we watch, you know, lots of hours and other, uh, you know, uh, film uh, watching other teams play and all that kind of stuff. But we're really, you know, we can't control what they do. We can just control our own performance. So that's something that we uh, work on uh, this uh, standard, uh, um, kind of symbol here. This was uh, uh, created by uh, our, our offensive coordinator, Matt Sorrelli. But uh, basically, we just talk about the standard, the, the way that we want things done. And uh, I'll talk more about that as the presentation goes on. But just, uh, you know, are you, you know, are you doing things kind of the way we want? Are you acting the way we want you to act, uh, you know, outside the field in the classroom, all that, uh, all those type of, uh, all those type of things. Um, other important things about our uh, uh, about our, our, our program here is uh, uh, we believe in kind of the year-round commitment uh, to being the best we can be. Okay, and that year-round commitment is um, you know as soon as the season's done, um, you know we're going to get the kids back in the weight room as uh, you know as soon as we can, and uh, you know and work um, to develop everything about them. And that's uh, academics. Uh, that's obviously a big part of what we do being in a school environment. Uh, the physical part, uh, uh, the neat thing working with this age group is just the growth that, uh, you know, kids can have. And it, it doesn't, it's not necessarily, you know, your big monsters, which, you know, we all like those big monsters, but even your, your smaller kids can get so much uh, faster and stronger uh, in a short period of time. Uh, the intangible part is important for us. Uh, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, we really push, you know, volunteering in the school, uh, things like moving desks for exams. Uh, last uh, October, we did a, a Feed the Hungry uh, just at the St. Mary's Hall there. And uh, that was an awesome, awesome experience. Um, you know, even when there's a, a service, uh, an assembly at school, uh, moving, uh, you know, chairs, uh, stuff like refereeing, flag football, all that stuff, we really want to be kind of entrenched in the, in the school. Um, we obviously want to get kids, uh, you know, uh, an excellent football experience. And, and we really believe that whether you're, you know, the top player on our team or the bottom player on our team, that uh, you can get a good football experience. Um, we think it's important uh, to, to talk about with these young men um, things like, uh, you know, violence against women, um, you know, talk about how to, how to, you know, how to, how to talk to women and how to be respectful. Uh, suicide education is something that um, is uh, very dear to our, our heart. Uh, we had a player, a graduate, uh, um, Dan Lamola, um, you know, pass away in uh, 2013 and uh, it really hit us, uh, you know, to the core. I know it hit the dinos from a core. It hit, uh, it was uh, really uh, just, terrible for us and I know a lot of you uh, on this uh, uh, on this uh, call here today have, have gone through something similar to that so uh, we want to talk to our kids about um, you know especially young men they they don't do a good job of uh, of expressing their feelings and uh, you know we want to uh, reach out to them and talk to them about uh, if they need help or if they see somebody that needs help that's something that's very important uh, drug awareness uh, is huge for us uh, you know we'll bring in our our uh, our school resource officer, you know, obviously with uh, um, marijuana being uh, legalized uh, in our in, in our country, um, you know, it's something we need to talk about. Um, you know, obviously all of the uh, people passing away with the uh, with the drugs that uh, that are being sold out there. Um, you know, it's important to talk about that. Uh, bullying and hazing; those are, are things that uh, uh, you know you got to be addressed and you got to talk about. Um, all this real life Wednesdays are, or if we play on a Friday, it's a Wednesday, or if we play on a Thursday, it's the Tuesday uh, after practice. Uh, just when I talk to the kids after practice, I'll try to, uh, you know, not just talk about football, talk about uh, things that are 
um, kind of relevant and, uh, uh, and important to their lives. And as coaches, we really have their ears because, um, you know, parents, uh, you know, a lot of your parents that are on this call, you know, we talk to our kids and it, it kind of, you know, goes in throughout year, uh, in, out, in one ear and out to the other. But as it, when a coach does it, it really hits home. So if we can uh, influence uh, our, our players, uh, you know, in a positive way, we want to make sure that we're doing that. Uh, other things that we value in our program, um, obviously hard work, uh, competition uh, is, is important. Uh, you know, being accountable, commitment. Uh, these are, you know, again, these are things that it doesn't matter if you're talking about football, if it doesn't matter if you're talking about working at a job, these are all things that uh, are very uh, important in uh, whatever, in whatever you do. Um, the importance of practice is something that, uh, again, I'll talk about more as we go on here, but practice is, uh, it, like when you're in your season, it's the, it's the most important thing you do. So we really uh, stress that with our kids. Uh, our style of play, I'll go through that. And uh, you know, obviously we want to, just like every football team out there, we want to work hard and be, uh, and be prepared. Um, these are kind of five things uh, you must uh, do to play uh, football at our school. So these are things that we, uh, you know, again, we just stress this to our, to our kids. Uh, you know, the morning workouts is, uh, is something that is uh, um, very, very important to us. Uh, once our, our season is done, uh, we want our kids working out uh, in the morning, um, you know, at least a couple times a week. Uh, and, um, we really stress that with our kids. Uh, uh, I'm going to get into multi-sport athletes in a, in a second here, but one of the reasons why we work out in the morning is uh, we want our kids doing other sports. Uh, we want them doing uh, other things. And uh, when you're working out in the morning, that uh, um, has less impact on uh, interfering with that. Uh, we have, a, a, like a lot of places do, have a sport performance uh, a class that uh, we like our athletes uh, to take uh, in the second semester. Uh, we, you know, again, for our uh, uh, coaches that are outside of, uh, of Calgary here, um, we really stress uh, to our kids that uh, we really like them playing uh, community uh, football in the spring. Uh, we really like them uh, playing uh, for their community coaches. Uh, we think it's just a great way to get uh, more football uh, in, in Calgary. Uh, our rules are a little different um, governing uh, what we can do in the spring as a team. Uh, we can only have a week practice uh, in June, whereas I know the provincial rule is, uh, you know, May 1st, uh, you can kind of uh, do what you want. We don't play under those rules. So we think it's, it's important for kids to, to just get more football in in the spring. We think it's also important for them to get different coaching to get uh, coaching uh, that is um you know different than they would get from uh, from us at the high school and uh, you know we think that's uh, great and we're fortunate we have uh, the hilltoppers and the mavericks uh, uh, community teams do uh, do a wonderful job with our players uh, we want our, our our kids to be involved in track and field uh, we think it's important for them to uh, represent our um, our school and and it's just it's just something else to that they can compete in um you know a neat thing in the nfl draft which you know we're all salivating uh, to watch next thursday it might be the most watched uh event in the history of television but uh you know of those 32 round draft picks uh the, the sorry 32 first round draft picks you know probably 20 to 25 every year are, are football players that also did track and um, just being able to handle, uh, you know, doing the track and, you know, doing your training and, and spring football, I think is important for kids to be able to balance uh, things. And uh, um, so we think that's important. And the last thing, uh, being a good person, uh, you know, we want our, our kids to treat each other well, to be honest, trustworthy, you know, we don't want our kids, uh, you know, in drugs, we want them doing their schoolwork. Uh, the way I look at it is uh, I have a son who's uh, eight, eight years old and he loves hanging around our football players. He just loves running in the school and, um, you know, hanging out with them and stuff. And uh, um, if, if I feel comfortable with him hanging out with our players, which I do, uh, then I know that uh, we have the right kids that are, uh, that are in, our, in, in our program. Now, that's not to say that... Uh, you know, our kids or your kids or uh, all kids, uh, you know, are perfect all the time. That's, that's not true. But, uh, you know, we want them to, uh, 
to make good decisions. And uh, if they if they make a poor decision, we want them to uh, to learn from it. But uh, you know, we're at the point in our program where um, you know if a, if a kid constantly is doing the the wrong thing, um, you know, we don't we don't really want that uh, that player to be part uh, of our of our of our program we want uh, the program to help those kids and uh, and kind of steer them in the right in the right direction um, we're process based so i'll go through this quickly uh, each day is uh, just as important so uh, you know i stress this to the kids lots that you know when we played our, our last game of the year uh, in november uh, this past year um, you know our you know, our workout in February was just as important, um, you know, and again, it, it takes kids a little while to, uh, to, to learn that, but uh, we, you know, we, we really believe that. Uh, again, it's all about building positive uh, habits, uh, something that we struggle with uh, in that um, kids got to understand they can't be in a rush. There isn't a, a quick fix, uh, a, a, you know, a, a quick fix, uh, persistence. They got to be persistence, persistence with things. Um, I, uh, I got off on a tangent when we started here, but uh, I really believe that kids have changed. I, I and, and those of you that uh, you know have done safe contact or some of the other courses with me know I, I start every session with this, but in the last two or three years, I think I've been reluctant to say it, but I've been saying it now, kids have changed. Kids don't need... Uh, to play sports, they don't need to play football to be entertained. They could stay in their rooms, and uh, you know they could uh, even stay connected with their friends, uh, you know, through social media, or um, you know they don't need to go out. So, uh, as coaches, uh, you know, our ways of coaching needs to need to change a little bit. I, I think the days of uh, you know screaming at kids, um, you know, from the minute practice starts to the minute practice ends. Uh, I just don't think you can be that way anymore because kids have changed. They, you know, it does, doesn't mean you can't be disciplined. And obviously there are spots for, uh, uh, you know, get, getting excited on the field. But uh, I think it's important to understand that, that kids have a lot of options. And I know, um, you know, football is always under attack because it's the, you know, it's the most popular sport and there's, you know, obviously head injuries and, uh, uh, and, 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 and those type of things. But I don't think that is what is really affecting uh, numbers. I think what's just affecting numbers is just kids have a lot of choices and uh, coaches really need to uh, change and, uh, and adapt to that. And I would never have, you know, five years ago, I don't think I've ever would have made that, uh, made that statement. Um, obviously being enthusiastic about, uh, uh, everything you do, we want our kids to be excited about, uh, about, uh, about things. Uh, this is a big one for us, uh, positive about the program, uh, your best recruiters, uh, your best ambassadors of the program. Uh, you know, it isn't the, Coaches, when you go talk to your Bantam players or go to your junior highs and, you know, have a great presentation and, uh, you know, the, the, your best ambassadors are, are your players. They need to speak positive about, about your program and what you're doing. I talk about it with our kids all the time that if they can't speak about the program positively, um, then they shouldn't be in the program. So that's something that is, uh, that is key. And, uh, you know, really stressing that every person in the program uh, is important. Because, you know, whether you're the star player or you're player number 50, uh, if you're at a school and, and you wear the hoodie or the, you know, the T-shirt that, that represents the full football program, um, you're going to be judged. You're going to be judged by the students. You're going to be judged by the uh, teachers. So it's important that uh, your kids are acting in a way that you want them to uh, act. Um, so just in terms of uh, player development, uh, this is, a, a, you know, a big thing uh, with, uh, with us. Um, Again, we're very fortunate uh, here. Uh, you know, we'll get in, you know, in between, depending on the year, between, uh, you know, probably between 15 to 20 uh, incoming grade 10s every year that have, uh, that have played uh, football. Uh, what's important is, you know, obviously we want those kids and, you know, to keep playing and keep coming, but it's the kids who haven't played. It's the, it's the athletes that, you know, haven't started playing football till grade 10. Uh, it's very important that you get those kids kind of uh, ready to go and, uh, you know, kind of get them on the assembly line. We talk about with our kids, um, we want them reaching their potential. 
uh, if you're an okay player, we want to get you to be a good player. If you're a good player, we want to be a great player. Uh, if you're a great player, we want you to become a special player. And, um, you know, how do you do that? That's obviously through the, you know, through all your training and, uh, and everything you do in your program. Um, things like evaluating players, um, you know, uh, when you put up depth charts, um, you know, during, during the season, uh, you know, we think it's, uh, um, it's a good way for kids to get excited and, uh, uh, you know, to understand that it is a, it is a competitive, uh, environment. Um, a big thing for training is obviously injury prevention. Um, you know, a, a big thing for us is, you know, and for everybody is you always want to go into, you know, every game with all your players, uh, able to play, uh, in our last game of the year, uh, this past November of our 46 players on our team, 45 were able to play in that, in, in that, in that final game. So we were, we were happy about that. Uh, the toughness thing is uh, something that is, uh, that is huge too. Um, you know, if you play football uh, right away, you know, I, I think you're tough. I, you know, I think you're tough. Uh, uh, you know, obviously being able to, to deal with, um, you know, scenarios you're going to play on the field and, uh, you know, playing in a, in a super competitive, tough division and, and tough games, uh, you know, that that's going to bring out that toughness. And, you know, obviously just like everybody, uh, the speed part is, uh, is very, very important. Um, just some basic weight training concepts. I won't get uh, too much into that. Um, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, a training program has to be that uh, complicated. Um, just, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is just uh, uh, stuff that we've learned throughout the years, but uh, things like ground-based exercises, uh, really stressing the Olympic lifts, um, high reps, and, uh, you know, working on, uh, um, you know, very good techniques. Uh, you know, for example, we don't, uh, here we don't back squat, uh, we'll just front squat. And one of the reason why is, um, you know, we just feel that kids, if they're, uh, if they're, if they're back squatting, uh, you know, there's just uh, more of an opportunity to put uh, more weight on the bar. And, uh, um, you know, there could be some, some, some issues in the weight room. When you're front squatting, uh, you just can't put as much weight on the bar. Your technique has to be uh, really, really uh, um, strong. So that's just something, a little thing we do. Uh, our programs, uh, we don't do the same thing. Uh, with our with our lifts, every couple of weeks we change uh, the exercises. Uh, everything they do is kind of monitored and uh, uh, is uh, is recorded. And uh, you know, I try to get get around uh, uh, the weight room and making sure uh, you know kids' techniques are good. Uh, and um, it gets to a point where the grade elevens uh, become uh, really good at 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 kind of monitoring also the grade 10 techniques and and that's where you know leadership comes into play uh, some of the things that we've done to kind of liven things up is we'll have weekly themes in the weight room with uh, um, you know certain clothing that they wear certain music that we uh, that we put on um, a big part of uh, uh, you know the weight room culture is you got to test I you know I think you got to test uh, throughout the uh, throughout the year and uh, so we'll test uh, uh, bench press in December and February, uh, and then in March and June, uh, we'll test bench as well as uh, a 40 and uh, a pro agility test. Uh, those are the only three tests that we uh, that, that we do, but uh, you know we put up those uh, re results and uh, kind of give the kids goals so they can uh, kind of get better. From a speed agility conditioning concepts, again, kind of simple movements, uh, not a lot of complicated stuff that we're doing. Uh, really stressing flexibility, um, just in our in our warm up and stuff, uh, especially for the big guys. Um, you know, if you're lucky enough to have those, uh, you know, really uh, athletic big kids, uh, uh, you're very lucky because a lot of them aren't. But uh, through a lot of flexibility stuff, you can really help those guys up. And um, with the with the running component, just trying to do things that are uh, kind of football specific. So that's our, um, you know, again, just some some background on, on our training program. It's not that, you know, it's not that complicated. Um, other things uh, that we stress with our kids on how to improve, you know, obviously the morning workouts, um, uh, you know, taking the sport performance class. Uh, again, we're gonna stress other sports. Um, we had, um, you know, this uh, the, the, this past year, our, our team MVP on our football team uh, also played basketball. 
And, uh, you know, he did a great job of, uh, you know, balancing, getting his workouts in. And, and uh, that, was, uh, that was great. We had another a player on our, our junior basketball team this year that was, you know, probably a top, you know, top two or three player on the junior team. Uh, he was our, uh, you know, probably our best, uh, one of our best players on our junior full football team. And, you know, he was able to get in his, uh, his uh, you know, his workouts there. So we really uh, haven't had a, uh, you know, a big issue with, uh, with other sports. You just, obviously you got to be reasonable uh, with, uh, uh, with your, uh, with your athletes. Um, my frustration is, is uh, uh, again, if we just look at basketball players and I'm sure it's like this in a lot of other buildings, you know, I think it would really benefit those, uh, those basketball kids uh, to be playing football. I think it would help them, um, you know, immensely uh, in, uh, uh, in, you know, in their basketball playing. Uh, something we, we talk about lots is nutrition. Uh, that's something that we uh, stress too. And uh, I, I heard this at a clinic uh, way back when, but uh, the fastest way to improve uh, uh, as a football player is to become a student to the game. Uh, so, you know, really, um, you know, this goes into your, your in season, uh, you know, how you're watching film and how you're watching football. And um, there's so much football on TV and uh you know just you know telling the linemen that you know they don't have to watch the ball they can watch the linemen and you know telling your receivers to you know really focus on you know how those receivers in the cfl and nfl block and uh and all those type of things um now this is something we go through with our our, our kids too uh things we want to avoid um and again if we go back uh to that uh that first slide when i had the uh, the traits of excellence there. Uh, what we'll have our players do is uh, so we'll have them you know write out and and talk about what, with them. Okay, what does it mean to be a great teammate? What does that mean for a Notre Dame football player? What does it mean to have um, you know great attention to detail? Uh, I, I think you got to lay it out for the kids. I think you got to give uh, kind of uh, um, examples for them. Um, Things that we talk to our kids about, uh, you know, uh, the worst word we can call you in our program is that you're a, you're a flake, you're kind of unreliable. Uh, you know, maybe uh, those kids that are a little uh, in, uh, selfish or entitled, okay, that is, uh, uh, that is something that is a dangerous thing in any program. Um, you know, a kid that is a jerk in a, in a class, uh, we talk to kids all the time about, you um, you know, just being nice to teachers, uh, being, you know, uh, give them always examples of uh, um, just how to, how to act in class. Uh, this really bothers us, uh, you know, kids that are cocky, kids that, uh, um, it's just kind of the nature of, uh, of sports and the nature of where, uh, where things are, things are, are, are going. Uh, we had a, a couple of incidents at, uh, at a game late in the season for us this year, and it, it was really, really upsetting. We, uh, we were successful on the scoreboard uh, in the game, but uh, it was uh, it was not a very uh, happy place uh, in our locker room. And when our when our, our uh, my talks to the kids uh, after, uh, I didn't do a good job of kind of nipping some things in the butt, and uh, I didn't really like how how we acted. So when we talk about uh, success, um, that was an example of. You know, I think, you know, we were successful on the scoreboard in the game, but I was, uh, you know, really disappointed. And uh, I was mostly disappointed myself that I didn't do a better job of uh, kind of explaining to them what was needed. Uh, lack of commitment, you know, obviously something that we all want from our kids in our program. Um, this energy sucking vampires, uh, you know, we have those kids that uh, um, are all, you know, high maintenance or uh, they just, they just take the energy out of you, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, you're called to the office because uh, you're dealing with a problem. Um, you know, that's something that uh, um, that we all got to deal deal with, right? I, you know, we've all heard the saying, you know, you spend, uh, you know, 80% of your time with uh, about 20% of your kids. Uh, if you can make those numbers a little more even, it, it really helps. Um, you know, if kids won't comply to what we want them to do, we'll just remove them. Um, and then this is kind of the continuum of kids. Uh, uh, I think when kids uh, are in grade 10, they feel like they, they kind of have to do stuff. And then about halfway through grade 10, um, you know, I think right before uh, we went on this uh, quarantine break here, I think a lot of our grade 10s kind of changed to they, they need to do it. They felt good about doing the stuff we asked them to do. And then when they become grade 11, uh, they, they, 
they they change they they want to do it they 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 want to do it and that's something that we really battle with our our program is uh, there's just a, such a difference in maturity level from grade tens uh, to grade elevens. Uh, uh, um, again, these are just uh, this was just from our uh, uh, one of our, uh, our our slides that uh, you know I, I showed the kids. Um, you know, again, issues that we're dealing with, uh, sense of entitlement. Um, you know, I'm big on telling kids that you know we've been lucky that we've been successful here before, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful. Um, just because you're in the program, you have to do the things we need you to do. And that, I, that's just something that um, I think probably about five or six years ago started to, uh, started to come up here. And, uh, uh, you know, I needed to do a little bit better job of uh, uh, making sure kids understand that, you know, just because you're, you know, a Notre Dame football player doesn't mean you're automatically going to be going to be successful um, got these kids that are you know in our program but they're not really in our program they're kind of not uh, all in uh, again you know kids that kind of think they've arrived so again that's the sense of entitlement uh, then you have kids on the other uh, you know specter the kind of the lack of confidence and uh, you know when we talk to kids about that it's uh, you know what comes first the chicken or the egg in terms of uh, um, letting uh, kids, uh, you know, kind of gain that confidence. So we're going to have confidence in them when they have confidence in, uh, in themselves. And, and that, uh, I see a lot of growth uh, from kids when they first play uh, football, senior football in grade 11 to grade 12. Um, again, I understand player development. We talk about like reps in the weight room. So all this uh, uh, 414 is, is on a, any given day, uh, that, that, that could be how many reps overall uh, in all your exercises that you do in the weight room, uh, you know, 18 sprints and sports pro, uh, getting kids to understand that uh, each one of those reps, each one of those sprints is what kind of gets you better. Um, you know, we all have those athletes in a program that go hard all the time, that every rep, every sprint, everything, uh, you know, we need all our kids to kind of, kind of be that way. Uh, other things, um, you know, obviously uh, falling back to the lowest, uh, common factor. So a set of kind of rising up in your, in your group, kids kind of, kind of falling, uh, falling back. And then obviously when you have players that, uh, that leave the, that, that leave your program, those are, uh, you know, all things that, things that uh, hurt. Um, hey coach, uh, I'm just going to uh, interrupt you just for a sec. There's a good question by text. I'll give you a chance to breathe and uh, okay. grab a little drink of water if you want, but uh, a couple, couple slides ago, you had mentioned uh, teaching them how to watch football. Um, I thought that was really valuable. And I think about our high school team and we tell them to watch film and watch film, watch film, watch film. But we've, we've never actually sat down and taught them properly what to watch and how to watch. So I, I thought that was really valuable. And somebody had asked, is there any good reading out there? Like, do you have any uh, educational resources that you've used or ways that you teach your kids how to watch film, your players to watch film? Uh, there's a, there's an article out there, uh, out there somewhere in, the, uh, in on, on the web that is, uh, from, uh, the New York Jets playbook when Bill Belichick was their, uh, a D coordinator and, uh, it, it's floating around out there. I, I have it. I'll, I'll, I'll look for it. And, uh, you know, it just basically talks about, um, you know, what to look for, uh, for every position. So, you know, if you're an old lineman, what to look for uh, in, uh, you know, in the D lineman you're going to go against, what to look for uh, in, uh, if, even if you're watching other old linemen play, just, uh, you know, in their stances, in their pad level. So um, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a great uh, resource there. Uh, I think when you, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be that complicated. Just when you're talking to your players about watching film um, or watching games uh, is just watch how the players uh, uh, act, watch how they move around, watch how they, uh, uh, you know, go from, uh, uh, go from the sideline to the huddle. Uh, those, uh, those, those little things there. Um, you know, none of us on this uh, call, uh, coach uh, pro athletes, but we want them to act like a pro. So just to, you know, just to really see kind of how they, uh, you know, kind of how they react. And, and I think what's really good to show kids and have kids watched is any of those mic'd up stuff, um, you know, where they have the, uh, the players mic'd up and, uh, 
Um, yeah, I know CFL has a, has a, you know, a game a week that's mic'd up, but um, the, the NFL has that, uh, has that show where they, uh, um, you know, where they have the sounds of the game. I, I think those are all really good things for players to, to do. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. All right, I'll uh, I'll keep going on here. Um, so again, uh, just you know, talking about uh, players, uh, you know, where you're getting your players from. You know, obviously the experienced players, um, you know, the kids from your Bantam uh, teams. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, uh, uh, you know, that you're 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 talking to those players uh, as a high school coach. Uh, your your junior high schools, those kids that that feed into you. Uh, you know, going to visit them. Uh, really promoting your program within those, uh, uh, and then within your own school, uh, promoting your 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 program. I I, I think the days of being uh, just that isolated program, um, where you're uh, kind of on your own little island. I you know I think those days are uh, I think those days are are uh, are gone because there's just not as many players that are playing. So I think you want to. Um, you know, you want to make your program as attractive to, you know, as many, as many kids as you, as, as you can. Um, again, player development, I talked about it, strength and conditioning, uh, you know, football uh, in Calgary for us, um, you know, a big thing is uh, getting to play in the spring. There's obviously a ton of camps out there that kids can do, um, you know, encouraging them to play other sports. Uh, and then something I'll talk about at the end here, that's been really good for us, uh, I'll work with uh, every single one of our grade 11s and just go through a leadership uh, curriculum with them uh, in, the, in the second semester. And that has been uh, really, really uh, valuable for us. We never, we never want to be in a scenario where we step on the field and we're like, you know, we're, who are leaders? Why don't we have any leaders? You want to do everything possible to at least uh, uh, try to uh, train your kids to be leaders because with leadership, it, it doesn't matter if, uh, you know, a coach can say stuff to your blue in the face. If it comes from your players, it, uh, it means a lot more. Um, just a fancy little uh, chart here and just how we look at our players uh, from, you know, late November to late June, just in terms of, um, you know, how are they going to develop? Um, so things like the weight room, obviously I talked about sport performance, playing football in the spring, other sports, and then that intrinsic, uh, that intrinsic value uh, in the summer. Um, you know, we, we can't work with our kids at all uh, in, uh, in Calgary in the summer, but just there, there's, you know, there's stuff they're doing on their own in the weight room, uh, the running program, again, if they're doing any skill development stuff, uh, and then intrinsic, uh, that just that intrinsic kind of wanting to, wanting to be good. And then when we get to the season, um, it really changes um, to how they develop, uh, you know, we put the big value on practice, uh, practice being, uh, especially early on in the season, being like 70% of what they do. Uh, we'll continue our weights uh, during the year and obviously meeting. So that's how we, again, we talk about our, our player development. Um, coaches, okay, talk about coaches here. And uh, uh, so you're building of your staff, uh, who can help you, um, you know, a mix of individuals, young and old, experienced, less experienced, um, those support staff, uh, other teachers in a school environment, uh, managers, people that can get you, uh, that can help you. Um, you know, what's your responsibilities for all the coaches? And uh, a big one here is uh, empowering an individual. So, uh, you know, so it doesn't matter if you're the, if you're out there and you're a head coach or if you're an assistant coach, uh, just, you know, what are you doing to kind of empower the individuals that you, that you work, 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 work with? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed uh, and uh, uh to put up this slide here, but uh, with our coaching staff here, uh, we have uh, 74 years of working together. This is prior to last year. So um, of our uh, teachers uh, in, the, uh, in the building, uh, uh, Dan Zabkowski has been here for 13 years, uh, uh, Matt Sardarelli for seven, uh, Celeste Bazinet for seven, KJ Donald for four. So this is prior to, uh, uh, to last year. Um, so we have combined with all of our coaches, uh, you know, 74 years of, uh, of working experience together. And like I said, this is, you know, 
before last year. So 14 years of the school being open. So again, it's just an embarrassment of riches here. Uh, we're so fortunate that um, the six uh, teachers that uh, that teach, uh, you know, basically full time phys ed here, uh, you know, all six of us are involved in 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 the football program. And, uh, you know, for the six uh, in spring, coach girls rugby uh, together as well. So that camaraderie, um, you know, that, that friendship, uh, you know, between everybody is huge. Uh, and then in our community uh, volunteers, um, you know, our old line coach, Frank Pellegrino, he's uh, been with us for eight years. He's a former player. Our quarterback coach, uh, Matt Fortini, six years. He's a former player. Uh, Steven Terrero, receiver coach, seven years, a former player. Uh, you know, Alex Personi, four years, a former player. Adriano Larada, uh, three years, a former player. Uh, CJ Jackson's our only coach that uh, on staff that wasn't a, a former a player. So again, that I know it's not like that at a lot of places, and we're very lucky there. Uh, off field, we're so blessed to uh, our athletic director. Uh, uh, Leah Conforti, uh, she, uh, you know, being an athletic director is just a thankless job, but, um, you know, she also works with all of her grade 10 football players in season and, uh, um, you know, works with them uh, with uh, teaching them their, their kind of intro to weight training. Uh, we have another teacher, uh, Patricia Solovey, who does a lot of fundraising stuff. So again, uh, there's other teachers that are in here. Uh, I guess my point is, uh, if you're a coach out there at a school, if you can get people that can help you and that can support you, uh, it, it, it's really, really beneficial. As a, as a, and as coaches, we're all control freaks. We're all, uh, you know, we're all, you know, want to have our hands and everything. Uh, I've been a lot better as a coach uh, the more I've let go. Uh, and uh, just having, you know, really capable people that are competent, uh, that can do, uh, you know, things a lot better than, then I could do them absolutely for sure. So I think that's something at your at your schools. If you if you don't have a lot of support, if just uh, you know, again, it's embarrassment of riches for me here. But if there's things you can do to uh, to get people on board and and people to help, because the more people you have in the building helping you, uh, the better the better it's going to be. And uh, you know, everybody that kind of touches uh, kids in our program and works with kids, um, you know, they're all we're all kind of, uh, you know, the message will come out a little differently, but we're all kind of, uh, you know, from the, 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 the same background. So uh, we're, we're really, really lucky here. But again, if you're at a place, um, um, you know, I know there's lots of great programs out there that have like, you know, one or two teachers and the rest community coaches. But uh, if you can do something to, uh, it doesn't even have to be from a coaching uh, scenario, but just to get a teacher involved in your program. It's just more eyes on your players during the day. And I, I think that's important. I think it's important for your kids to see that. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about our, our you know, our, 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 our systems, but we do, uh, you know, have some beliefs and, uh, um, you know, we, we like running the ball here. Uh, we like, um, um, you know, we like uh, tight ends. Okay, uh, we're uh, uh, we're a no huddle team. Uh, we don't like huddling, and, and the reason we don't like huddling is it's not so much for a game uh, scenario, but it's more of a practice scenario. We're just able to get way more reps uh, when we uh, when we don't huddle, and uh, so that's something that uh, you know Coach Sarelli does an awesome job getting his kids. Uh, um, you know, on board with that right, right away. Uh, just if we looked at our, our kind of stats from uh, uh, last year, uh, we ran the ball about 60% of the time. Uh, we were in two back uh, about 55% uh, of the time. Uh, we had a tight end or two tight ends on the field 63% uh, of the time. And this is a rarity uh, in football now, but uh, we were under center 65% of the time. And, and uh, we really like that. We like, uh, you know, some of the angles with the running game. Uh, we think the play action game is uh, very, very good under center, but um, that's just our style of play. That's what we uh, like to do on offense. Uh, on, uh, on defense, we're not so much uh, concept based on X's and O's, but more uh, uh, kind of on alignment and assignment. Um, you know, big thing is we don't want to give up the big play. Um, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're a cover three team, uh, you know, 75% of our snaps last year, we were in cover three 
and uh, uh, 75% of those snaps, uh, we only brought four man pressure. So again, we don't wanna bring a lot of heat. Uh, we wanna kind of keep things uh, uh, in front of them. Uh, as a young coach, uh, 20 years ago, you know, if you, if, you know, if I had said that I was a bend, don't break guy, it would have been like blasphemy, but that, that's what we are. And uh, it's, just, it's just the way we like playing. And uh, uh, we like playing a lot of zone uh, coverage just because um, it just helps us in practicing. We feel that we can, um, you know, really go through uh, the, you know, the, the routes we're going to see a lot, uh, a, a, a lot better. Now, is this, you know, the best philosophy? It, it just, it's just, it's what we do. Obviously, there's many ways to, you know, skin a cat. And there's, you know, teams doing a you know, great job out there, chucking the ball and blitzing like crazy. But this is kind of what we believe in uh, here. Um, special teams is something that, uh, uh, you know, we try to be sound and not just uh, give lip service to. Uh, we try to get our best players on the field there uh, to a point, And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we don't want to, you know, every coach out there and every head coach, and I'm as guilty as, uh, as the next one, uh, um, you know, we don't want to just uh, uh, give time special teams, but we want to break it down like a, like a position uh, uh, a group. Uh, kicking, the kicking game is one of those things where um, it can cost you uh, really, really early. The last football game we played, um, you know, we didn't do a really good job in the uh, – in the, uh, in the in the special teams, and that's you know my fault. I'm I'm responsible for that. We didn't play very well, but um, special teams is an area where you can get yourself beat uh, really really fast. Um, just some uh, uh, stuff here. Um, this is in the kids' lockers, and this just helps us uh, in organizing our, our skills for uh, for our uh, our coaches. But uh, we just have kind of three. Um, points for each position group in uh in in terms of what what we want to do our, our defensive philosophy we want to run and hit we want to attack the ball so we want to make sure our again this could all be you know uh, theoretical bs right but we want to make sure that we're practicing that so uh you know we're going to do pursuit heel drills we're obviously going to do our tackling drills we're going to work on on stripping the ball but these are the three kind of things that uh, we want our DBs able to do. And as coaches, if, if our kids can't relay this information back to us, we're not doing a very, a very good job. Offensively, we obviously want to move the ball or move the chains, protect the ball, and we want to finish our, our drives. And the same thing, the, the positions on offense have, uh, have, uh, have kind of three tenants that we're working for. So this just helps us in, um, you know, for example, if we're, uh, if we're working a, a drill with our with our alignment, are, are we working explosive get off? Are we playing with a great pad level? Um, are we playing with kind of a nasty attitude? Uh, if we're not, then you know we shouldn't be doing the drill, or we need to do you know we need to find something better. So this is kind of a guide that uh, we've used for I think probably eight or nine years, and uh, you know we tweak it every year, but just to help us organize the skill component of our of our players. Um, Talk about tra traditions real quick. Um, we really want to, uh, even though we're we're a fairly young school, you know, only having uh, you know 15 teams uh, here, uh, we really want to do a good job of celebrating the past. Uh, uh, we do uh, a lot of things uh, to talk about our past players and uh, players every year. Like, you know, you as coaches sometimes we talk about. Uh, um, it doesn't even have to be our own players. It could be like an NFL player that we really liked or a CFL player that we really liked. And kids will look at you funny. They don't even know who the heck you're talking about. It's just, obviously, it's the same thing with high school players. So we really try to give examples of our of our of our past uh, uh, players. Uh, you know, kind of remembering the the big games that happened in the past, just to kind of show them that uh, you know there's been kids that you know have been just like you that you know have done you know have done you know unbelievable things um we really try to keep our alumni involved with our program uh, this past year uh, we did like a 15th year uh, reunion for everybody uh in in september uh, anybody that graduated from our football program uh we've done a, a golf tournament we do an athletic sign auction where we really uh, uh have the alumni come back and we really want to talk about these past players because the best example uh, is former players. And it's not always, you know, 
uh, the great examples. You also talk about kids that, you know, if maybe things didn't work out for them, maybe they made some mistakes, but just to give the kids tangible evidence. And uh, the nice thing is, is, uh, you know, I've been here uh, since the beginning. So uh, I, I still have a memory of, uh, of all these players and all these things. So we really, we really try to, uh, uh, um, uh, mention that and stress that with our kids uh, just other things you talk about establishing tra traditions with your with your program well what does your football players what do they look like in the classroom uh what do they look like in a social situ situation uh, you know we you know we kind of skirt about those scenarios but uh you know what does it look like with social media uh how are you supposed to act and these aren't like issues that we all want to you know talk about all the time or feel comfortable talking about but they are, you know, problems that we have to deal with. Uh, in the locker room, how, how are you supposed to act uh, in the locker room? There's been, you know, obviously issues with, uh, you know, with hazing and bullying and those type of things in the locker room. Uh, how are you supposed to act? And obviously the same thing during games and uh, in the practice field. How does that look like for kids? Because honestly, there are some kids that just don't know. Like, we get the kids – you know, we, we, again, we, we get those 15 to 20 Bantam kids every year, but we also get kids that have never played a team sport before that, have, that you got to really go through things with those kids. And uh, so they, uh, so they, uh, they, uh, they, they understand. Um, again, on field, we're just getting to a little bit of a, a practice dimension here. Uh, so, you know, things that we want to uh, go through with the field stuff is, you know, the red zone, short yardage, uh, down in distance is something we really stress. Um, you know, situational defense, uh, you know, what does first down look like? What is uh, the red zone, short yardage? Um, you know, special teams, uh, the great thing about Canadian football, obviously all the different special team scenarios and the weather and the wind we face and all that kind of stuff. So uh, really stressing those stuff in uh, in. In, in practice. Um, I won't spend a, a ton of time with this. Uh, I know on uh, Tuesday, uh, Tyler from uh, Harry, Harry Inley is going to talk about practice uh, planning and, you know, they have an unbelievable program up there, but just uh, so some of the things that, that, you know, we like to stress with our kids is that um, other than, like during the season, there's nothing more important than practice. There is nothing more important uh, to, uh, to what you do to practice. Our kind of philosophy is, is uh, uh, we want to get as many reps as possible with, uh, with our kids, whether it's our skelly, whether it's our inside run or 12 on 12, if we want to get uh, as, as many reps as we can. Uh, we, our kind of philosophy is we think you'll learn with reps and sometimes the quality won't be the best, uh, you know, when you're going uh, hundred miles per hour, but uh, we just feel that, uh, you got to learn with reps. You got to learn with reps. Uh, it will be interesting for all of us uh, when we come back, uh, you know, hopefully in, in August, in, in late August here, because our kids wouldn't have had any, you know, any football uh, in the spring. So it'll be interesting to see how we all kind of navigate, uh, navigate that and adjust our own, uh, our own, our own practices. Uh, again, I won't go through this too much, but this is just a, uh, you know, a, a practice plan from a couple years back. Um, we've tried everything uh, in practices uh, to try to go a little shorter. Uh, we try to streamline stuff, but the reality is uh, we're on the field for a long time. <laughs> we, we practice, uh, uh, again, we're on the field, um, um, you know, going through a lot of reps and, uh, uh, you know, getting our kids ready and, uh, um, you know, we try to do a lot of, uh, a lot of fundamental work and, uh, you know, a lot of 12 on 12 work and, uh, you know, getting the kick in and all your individual stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, again, we, we don't, uh, we, we, when I talk to the parents in our preseason meeting, we tell them that, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna try to be quick in practice, but, uh, we, uh, we, we, do, we don't make any apologies for spending a lot of time out there. I'll go kind of quickly through, through this. Um, just, just like everybody, uh, this is from, again, from a few years back, but just having an insertion schedule uh, during training camp, uh, just so, um, you know, we're kind of all on the same page. Uh, something that we try to do is uh, coordinate. So if uh, Coach Sardarelli, if he's going to put in, um, you know, some type of, uh, uh, you know, goal line, um, 
you know, offense on a day, I'll make sure that I'm coordinated on defense that I'm going to put in our, our goal line defense. We work together uh, with these uh, with these things. I think that's something that we've done a good job of is, uh, um, you know, kind of being on the, on the same page in terms of, uh, uh, you know, working both sides of the ball. Um, this is just the skills inventory. So uh, just to help coaches out there, think about all the all the skills that all your different players uh, have to do and uh, you know, just put them down on a piece of paper and, you know, and make sure that you're, you're going through them in your practice. Um, this is uh, just an inventory. It's hard to see here with the, with the PowerPoint, we're actually redoing these uh, uh, now, but this is just a, kind of a year plan. I just pull out the linebacker one, but just having a progression of day one, day two, day three on a typical work week on, uh, on how things would, uh, would look. Would, would look would, would look like again I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the with the practice plan um, just to kind of uh, as we get going here um, I want to talk about a little bit about the uh, the, the the leadership stuff that we uh, that, that we do um, this is something that I've done uh, for for a long time I just take uh, this book here this uh, Jeff Jansen book and uh, I kind of made it up into uh, worksheets and uh, it's a little older. I think it's from 2006, 2007, but there's uh, it's like a 12 week course in there that uh, um, is really, really uh, good in terms of uh, um, having kids go through little leadership stuff. And uh, uh, again, you never want to be on the feet on the, in a position where you're on the field and uh, you're, you're saying, who's our leader? So you, you, you want to be able to help them and, and guide them. And, it, you know, how many teams, you know, how many guys out there have like those natural born leaders, uh, your best player, uh, that's your best leader every year? Like, uh, we don't. That definitely doesn't happen here. Um, you know, it, it does happen maybe once every, you know, seven, eight years. Uh, we really feel that you got to develop develop that with your kids and more importantly uh the stuff that they learn in this book is obviously it's important for you to be successful during the during the full football season but it's also more importantly for you know other things that they're gonna that they're gonna uh do with their uh uh in their lives uh, other books uh and what i'll do is uh, uh so I, i'll uh you know, this Urban Meyer book is an excellent book is i'll just uh kind of convert this into uh, you know maybe a 10 15 uh PowerPoint slide thing and kind of summarize it with the kids. Uh, and the next one we'll do is this uh, extreme uh, uh, ownership book here. Uh, the same thing. I'll kind of sum it up with the, with the kids. There's so much uh, resources out there uh, for leadership, for kids, kind of uh, um, for adults, anybody kind of reaching their potential. Uh, the one thing I try to stress to our kids is uh, all these books, um, they're awesome, uh, but they all have the kind of the same theme. It's uh, um, your attention to detail and your focus and how hard you work. And, you know, we try to, uh, you know, really uh, stress that with our kids in the, in the classroom stuff is that's basically what it comes down to. That's what it comes down on the field. That's what it's going to come down to with your academics. So uh, those are things that we, uh, we try to do with our, our kids there. Um, hey coach, were you yeah. able to, uh, were you able to make that into a credited course in the curriculum or is that uh, extra curricular in the after uh, in the off season? Yeah, it's funny you say that, Taylor. Our uh, our uh, our our vice principal uh, is all over me for uh, for wanting to make it a credit uh, a credit course. So uh, I I think next year it will be accredited uh, course that 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 he that uh, that he 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 wants me to do. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's all over me about that because uh, more credits is more money, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, other stuff here, just as we uh, get going. Lost my... Okay, just uh, other things with uh, uh, playing time here. Okay, I really wanted to stress this. Um, you know, obviously, just like everybody, best players play. Uh, we, you know, talk about when uh, when the season's done. Um, we don't have any returning starters. We just have returning players. Everybody, uh, you know, will play our best players. Um, uh, that includes grade tens. Uh, I know in Edmonton, it's a little bit different. I, I think uh, grade tens playing seniors is uh, is a lot more common. In, in Calgary, it's not. Um, it, there is every year some players that do it. Um, we typically will have you know two or three every year. 
grade tens that 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 do play seniors. Last year we didn't, and I didn't like like it because um, it just it just it's easier with those kids once you get them in the off season. They kind of understand. They can figure out things uh, quicker, and also uh, you know we feel that they're able to help you. But um, we we really want to stress to our kids that you know just because you played one year doesn't mean you know if you started in grade eleven or got some playing time. Um, you know, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to play the year uh, when you're in grade 12. You got to earn it. You got to be accountable uh, and all those things. Uh, I think one of the most important things I'm going to talk about, I left it to the end here, is uh, the number of players that you play. Uh, as a coach, my biggest regret is not, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago yelling at kids on the sideline or getting after kids in practice. I, I don't, I don't have regrets about that. My biggest regret as a coach is not playing as many kids. And that's something that, you know, I think uh, here we really, really uh, stress. So what I mean by that is, so if we looked at a roster last year of our 46 kids, uh, 37 of our 46 kids played meaningful snaps. That means they played, they either started a game or got into a game, uh, you know, when the game was still in question early in the game and, um, and, and those type of things. And the way, the reason, the, the way we're able to do that is uh, on offense, Coach Sardarelli, he'll run like multiple sets. He'll run like, you know, he'll have six linemen on the field. He'll have three running backs on the field. He'll have, uh, you know, three tight end types on the field uh, just to get more players on the field. And on defense, we'll do the same thing. We'll run, um, you know, a six DB package. We'll run a five D lineman package. And one of the reason why is just to get more kids on the field. And some of the kids we put on the field, they may not be ready to play right away. But what it does is it helps us uh, in the buy-in and it helps us to get kids working hard in practice, knowing that there is playing time available. So. Um, we will play really when I, the difference between us from say last year to about seven or eight years ago is we just play a ton more kids, meaningful snaps. And you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's easier for me to, to tell a kid, okay, you need to work out twice a week, all year round. And you know, you got to make sure you're working hard. Uh, if that player knows that he's got a really good chance to play. So uh, I, you know, that's something that has been so valuable for our program is uh, just getting kids on the field, whether, you know, it's, it's hiding kids on special teams or, you know, somewhere, or there's, there's just some position for some kid to play. And, uh, um, you know, has it hurt us on the field? Well, you know, maybe in some scenarios we don't have our, our maybe our best 12 kids aren't out there, but I think it does a lot more, uh, positive than negative. Just, you know, those kids are working hard in practice. They're working hard in the off season. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's easy for kids, like I said, to, to be distracted and kind of lose their focus. Uh, but if, if they know that they're going to get a chance to play, you know, I think that's something that is uh, really, really good, uh, uh, good, uh, good for, for them. Uh, you know, again, uh, communication with players, um, it, it, it hasn't been too, uh, too bad here, but if there's ever an issue with a player and playing time uh, and a parent, uh, I don't feel comfortable talking to the parent uh, about a kid's playing time without the player. Uh, I like the player part of the conversation uh, just because, um, you know, they're always here and, uh, and they're always uh, able to go. But uh, I would, I would suggest if you can, just uh, if you could look to see if there's a way to get more players uh, on the field, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think that would, uh, I think that would, that would really help. And, and uh, for us, um, we want as many players as possible. Like we were actually kind of disappointed that we ended up with uh, only 46 players last year at, you know, at some points at our peak, we had about 60, uh, 60 players working out. We would, uh, to us, the more players is the better, uh, just to help us in the way we practice. And again, just to get more players on the field. Um, Again, just some parent stuff. I uh, want our parents to be supportive. We want to be understanding. I uh, want our parents to be positive. Uh, this is uh, just stuff that I go through with our, our parents during their, uh, during their uh, our, our, our parent meeting. Um, we go through our practice schedule with our kids. Uh, uh, Mondays uh, during the season are late days. We will, uh, after practice, uh, we will have a, uh, a meeting on uh, 
on Monday and it's typically a later day. Uh, something I, I didn't put the slide in here, but uh, that really, I think, helps you develop your uh, camaraderie and your, your teamwork and just that togetherness is if you can feed the kids, if you have the means to feed the kids as, as much as you can, I, I think that's a great way to, uh, you know, just to get them to uh, be kids and, uh, you know, not just be football players. So we try to feed our kids as, uh, as much as you can. Um, uh, injuries. Uh, you know, really stress into parents that if, uh, you know, if their, if their son gets hurt, uh, what are the, you know, the steps in terms of uh, coming back to play and things like uh, uh, sport medicine and things that can help them out. Um, study hall, we set up a, uh, um, you, again, uh, on, uh, on a Tuesday night, we'll set up just a, a kind of an academic time after practice where any kids that are struggling with classes can, uh, uh, sit down for uh, 30 to 40 minutes and, uh, and and just be able to do some homework before uh, before they go uh, before they go to uh, be before they go home. But the key is is uh, again if you could feed your kids as much as you can, I think that I think that uh, that that really helps. Um, not going to talk about this lots, but um, a big thing is uh, uh, you know for us is uh, trying to get our kids to the next level uh, in football. Uh, as an educator, uh, you know, as a teacher, our job is to get students ready for, you know, whatever the future uh, is. And, and playing football is no different than any other field. So uh, we really try to stress to our kids and be as accommodating to post-secondary coaches as we can. Uh, we'll do a night uh, where we have a parent meeting. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about, we'll bring a counselor in and we'll talk about how to get to all the different uh, universities and colleges because a lot of kids don't know. A lot of kids and parents won't look up that information for themselves. And then I'll talk about it from a football perspective. Uh, and then we'll bring in uh, the Dinos and the Colts to talk to the kids uh, uh, about that. And, uh, um, you know, obviously, just like everybody, we're stressing with our kids. And, you know, if you're a good football player in Canada and you want to play post-secondary, you got to have obviously good academics. You got to love the game. There's some physical traits and we'll kind of go through them, the recruiting process, because it is different now with, uh, you know, having to register and blackout periods and, uh, and all those type of things. Um, just other items. Uh, I'm near the end here, guys. Um, clothing is a big thing for us. Um, we try to have as much clothing for the kids as, uh, as possible, uh, hoodies and sweats and uh, t-shirts as, uh, uh, as, uh, as, as much as we can, just to kind of, um, you know, I, they talk about, uh, you know, kind of selling your brand, but, you know, we want our kids wearing, we want our kids wearing, wearing our stuff. That's a great way to promote your program. Um, off season teams is something we do again to foster leadership. Uh, we'll, we'll put the kids in uh, squads of about five or six and, uh, uh, this year, I actually did it kind of differently. In the past, I've kind of assigned the captain of each group. This year, I didn't assign a captain. I, I just kind of let it be uh, uh, whoever wanted to take control just to, you know, check on their teammates, make sure they're getting their lifts in, make sure they're, uh, you know, being, um, you know, respectful in the classroom. A junior program, I haven't talked about our junior program at all. Uh, what we try to do with our junior program is, again, try to get as many kids uh, to play as as possible and uh, uh, in terms of X's and O's and language uh, we want our, our, our junior coaches and they do an excellent job of it of uh, you know using our kind of language using our um, you know basic uh, basic setups for offense and defense uh, we try to be as supportive to those guys as possible uh, early on in training camp we try to practice uh, together as much as we can as well as later in the year we'll again giving kids an opportunity for leadership. We'll have a lunch together where we basically let the grade 12s talk to the grade 10s about, you know, what it, what does it mean to be a Notre Dame football player and, uh, and those type of things. Um, other things, uh, grading players. Uh, uh, again, this was brought in by Coach Sardarelli, but, uh, you know, we try to do a, a great job of, uh, of grading our players and uh, just having a, a common um, – a way to, to evaluate them both in practice and, uh, and games. 
Um, things that we deal with, again, I talked to you about uh, uh, grade 10, uh, being able to, uh, uh, those grade 10s, it just takes them a little while to get on board uh, from grade 10 to 11. So I don't know if it's just us or if it's like that a lot of programs, but uh, that's something that we really try to work on is uh, just getting their maturity level up and, uh, and ready to go. Um, we've done it in the past um, is uh, we'll go away for, for a weekend uh, to camp. Uh, last year, we went to Camp Horizon. The last couple of years, we went to um, Camp Chief Hector uh, just to go off campus uh, to practice and, uh, um, you know, be together and, uh, you know, have a sleepover and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in the past, we've played special exhibition games and, uh, and traveled and then, and then those things as well, just to bring some excitement to the, uh, to, you know, to the program and get kids uh, you know, I really kind of amped up in the summer to, to get ready for the uh, fall. Um, Taylor, I went through a, I went through a lot there. <laughs> I went through a, a, a ton of stuff there. I don't think I've uh, breathed the whole time, but uh, um, if well, you, you know, know, you know what we had uh, about 103 people, but on an average about 98 to 100. So that, I think that gives you credit that not too many people tuned you out and just said, oh, "See nice. you later." Uh -huh. um, <laughs> with that being said. Um, you're okay to answer some questions, David? Oh, stuff? for sure. Yeah, for sure. So that's his, that's his presentation. Uh, like I said, we'll share it through Google tonight or tomorrow morning. There were a couple questions in the chat that I'll ask you, but obviously if people want to, um, if you want to stop sharing your screen and then if people want to come on and, and ask Dave something directly or type it in the can, if you want to head out, no problem. We'll see you next week. Um, one question that was here, uh, it's a good question about multi-sport athletes, but um, what is your advice for working with other sport coaches who don't want their dual sport athletes weight training during football off season? Yeah, I would just, uh, I would just stress to them that the weight training is going to help them in whatever sport they're doing. And I would just pull examples. I would pull examples of whether it's a, I would pull example of whether it's a basketball player or a rugby player or whatever. And just, uh, um, really stress to them that the, the weights is going to help. The weights is going to, uh, it's going to help. It's going to help with the toughness. It won't affect anything. And, uh, you know, try to be as accommodating as possible. That might mean that maybe you're working with the kids at lunch. You're doing a quick workout with them at lunch and stuff. But I would just really try to um, communicate with them and stress to them that it's a win-win for both. The athlete's going to, you know, it's going to help them stay connected with football, but it's going to help them if they're a basketball player. It's going to help them during their basketball season. Another question, and I'm sure we all have this problem, but you were talking about playing time and attitudes, but what if your best players have the worst attitudes? How do you handle that? Well, I, you know, I think, I, you know, I, I think with that, we were in a scenario not too long ago where we had a very, very important player that, um, just wasn't getting it. He just wasn't acting the way we needed to act. And, it just it came it just came to be there that he sat that he he sat and that he didn't uh, he didn't play and um, you 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 kind of have to have your standards and um, if you know if it affects you you know in the win loss column uh, it's going to affect you worse down the line anyway so as coaches sometimes we have to make those uh, make those tough decisions you you, you want to work with kids you want to show them the example but it's like the example of the player in football that keeps getting the unnecessary roughness penalty. Like eventually you just got to, the kid's got to stand beside you on the sideline. And then uh, sooner the better, because if you can curb it and he gets better throughout the rest of the season, great. If not, he doesn't, you know, create a, a cancer. But if you guys want to uh, pop your camera open and uh, ask Dave a question or just chat uh, without your camera, go ahead and ask any questions. We'll hang out as long as you guys want. Um, I don't think many of us have anywhere to be. <laughs> Hey, uh, Dave, I got, a, I got a question for you here. Yes, Morgan. Um, so you talk, about, you talk about a practice focus on reps, and you talk about the, the challenge of having a, you know, your, your athletes make um, take 100 miles an hour. Do you have it set? Like, when do you stop that, and when do you break that down to actually go over those coaching moments or those teachable moments with your players? So, uh, Morgan, I think um, especially early on, in the, like in training camp when you're not playing an opponent, uh, trying to videotape as much as possible. Uh, trying to, uh, like if you can, uh, to, you know, tape parts in practice. Um, really working hard 
uh, at the end of practice uh, to go through the things that uh, that, that you need to go over or uh, something I didn't go through in the practice plan was uh, our start of practice that early out period is basically a correction period so that that would be another uh, part to, to really stress the uh, uh, you know really stress the the, the, the the mistakes that were made as a teacher obviously the best part or the best way to do it is right after the mistake is done so uh, you know if you can coach on the fly and kind of coach on the run and, and get some points across that is best but if you can't then either after practice or the next day during your uh, kind of a walk through a meeting period okay cool thanks uh, a good question we had from uh, just a text message was, do you ever worry about burning out your kids and maybe how do you handle that if you have in the past or what do you do to, to not burn out your kids? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and I, I think I've done a poor job in, in past years of that burnout thing. Um, something I didn't talk about was uh, uh, we won't practice with pads, uh, full equipment, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be in, uh, just helmets, um, for, well, the practice for the game, uh, as the season gets on, uh, we'll be in, we, as the season gets to October, we might not practice and we might practice in shoulder pads maybe once a week. So, um, so that's something that I've really done a bit better job of not kind of, uh, uh, burning out our kids, uh, our off season is uh, pretty extensive. So, um, you know, kids, um, kids work hard in that, in that time frame. So uh, it, it's my hope that during the season, it becomes uh, it's, it's, it's even easier, but that is a good point it is um, it is something that you definitely, you definitely got to monitor. And that's why uh, Taylor, I would love to have a roster of 55 to 60 kids. Cause I think just, in terms of managing reps and uh, managing players, I think that would be uh, uh, really, really good for us. Okay, I'm not sure if you have the chat up, but uh, the one is, uh, what if you're a positional coach, but you have negativity within the teacher coaches slash head coaches? I don't know, Anthony, if you want to elaborate on that. I'm not sure I fully understand that one. But if you're still here, Anthony. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I think what he's talking about, Taylor, is, uh, you know, maybe there's not that synergy with, uh, with the coaching staff. So uh, that's something that I think has to be, uh, it's not going to be perfect. It's not perfect with us for sure. But I think that's something that's got to be worked on, um, you know, off the field, just in terms of, uh, um, you know, talking to each other and just communicating and, and, and just trying to make sure that you're, you're on the same page in terms of, uh, you know, how you're dealing with your athletes and, uh, um, you know, how, how you want to portray things with them. Uh, he says uh, the coach is above you. So he, it sounds like maybe okay. this person is a position coach, we'll hypothetically say, and uh, they're the ones spreading the negativity. Maybe the head coach is spreading some negativity. Yeah, I, I would just, uh, you know, try to pull that coach aside and, and just try to uh, communicate with them. And, and uh, you know, maybe the coach isn't even doing it uh, maybe he doesn't even know he's doing it. Like I know uh, a lot of time, some of the best feedback I've gotten is from, um, you know, position coaches. Uh, I didn't even realize what I was doing. So that might be something too to, you know, don't approach it kind of confrontational, but just to, you know, communicate and over a beer or whatever, and just say, maybe, maybe we should try it this way. How do you select your captains? So our captains, again, I didn't talk about that, but uh, I also what I didn't talk about too is uh, we have, uh, uh, we have captains, uh, uh, something I started doing three years ago, we have off season uh, captains, like kind of post season captains uh, as well. But during the season, uh, we vote, the kids vote for captains and uh, it's been pretty good. Knock on wood. Um, there, you know, cause you're always worried as a coach when you, uh, give that control that you don't know who's going to end up being, uh, being selected, but the kids have been pretty good in uh, kind of choosing the kids that you would, uh, that you would uh, uh, kind of uh, sus uh, suspect. I, I've, I've seen other programs that, uh, um, you know, they actually have a process where kids got to interview for captains. And I, you know, I, I think that's kind of a neat, a neat thing there, but uh, the way we do it now is we have uh, at the end of the, uh, the preseason, we have kids vote. Okay. 
I'm not sure how much we want to get into this one. It's not necessarily the topic, but uh, spring football being such a big part of Calgary, uh, how do you anticipate the evolution moving forward with football's ca uh, Canada's changes to the regulations in terms of probably like weeks of play? And I know you've had some great meetings with the yeah. high school association and the spring league, and, and you guys are moving positively together. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm kind of uh, in this uh, uh, world here because I'm uh, heavily involved with spring football on the board and all that. I, I don't think Football Canada, they didn't, that, those seasons of play, it wasn't for Alberta. I, they, they didn't put that in for us. I think they put that in for kind of the Ontario and kids playing, you know, two sports at the same time and or two teams on the same yeah. time. So uh, I think with us going forward, um, you know, our season is pretty streamlined as it is. Like I think we did this year, we were, so, we were only supposed to have five games five uh, regular season games and a couple playoff games. So I see us uh, working together with football Canada and uh, being able to squeeze it to be able to squeeze it all, all in. Hey, Scotty, uh, turn your, turn your uh, camera on, buddy. We all want to see your beautiful face and you can talk to coach Dave and ask your question. All right. If you're still dressed, but uh, ask your question, please. Turn the lamp on too. Give everybody. There you go. Oh, nice nice. So you mentioned your, your practice that you have your late meetings, uh, your late practice on Monday, you do post-practice meetings. Is this where you were reviewing the previous game's film or is that something you do at a different time? Do you go through the film with your guys? I'm assuming you do. Yeah, so if we play, if we play on a Friday, if we play on it, cause Calgary, I don't know what it's like at rest of province, but we either play Thursday or Friday. If we play on a Friday, we'll start the film review with the kids um, uh, Monday at lunch and then Monday after, after practice. If we play on a Thursday, uh, then we'll get all the film done basically Friday after school, like, uh, our rundown. Um, if, if that's the case, then on that Monday, we will start the film watching film together of the next opponent. Okay. So it just depends if we're on a Thursday or a Friday. So what we'll do is uh, half the group will work out and then half the, like offense will work out, defense watch film, and then we'll switch halfway through on those Mondays. Okay. Gotcha. And then you said you practice, you film some of your practices, you review the practice film as well. Yes. Yes, during the uh, uh, during uh, during training camp, we'll just get that, and it's so easy now with Huddle with their new, um, you know, you just gotta load it onto your computer. We'll just get that onto Huddle right away, and we'll do the same thing during the preseason. We'll watch, um, we'll we'll come in, uh, the offense will lift, defense will watch film, and then we'll switch and we'll watch film of that of of that day's practice. Perfect. Thanks, Coach. No, you're welcome. Uh, the floor is open if anybody wants to, to jump on uh, verbally or visually or write it down. If not, uh, we'll wrap it up. But you have a wealth of knowledge here and uh, uh, take advantage of it while you can. Coach D, uh, what do you do to keep the costs relatively affordable for your kids? Uh, I know in, in rural football, football is an expensive sport. And, you know, you talk about giving them swag and, and, and all that cool stuff, which I totally agree with. Uh, is there anything that you guys have at Notre Dame that's, that's put into practice uh, to keep the costs relatively reasonable for the kids? Yeah, uh, great, great, great question. So we've done uh, in the past, the golf tournament has been really, really good good for us. Um, that's something that's raised, you know, between eight and $10,000. Um, every spring, uh, we host, uh, the Italian sportsman dinner is uh, hosted at, uh, Notre Dame. And we, we set up, we sell raffle tickets, uh, we take down, um, other things we do is during the uh, fall, we'll do a couple raffles as a, as a fundraiser to help with, uh, with, uh, with fees. Um, this year, I think we're all in the same boat where, you know, obviously none of that stuff happened. The economy is not going to be good for anybody out there. So, uh, I, you know, I envision us uh, just like I think a lot of programs in, uh, you know, really cutting down some of the things that we, uh, that we do and, uh, uh, you know, it might not be the, uh, you know, it might not be the top quality t-shirt that we give out to all the kids and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, 
any type of fundraising um, is really beneficial for us. And what helps us too is um, as a school, we don't, uh, we have some separate things we do for football, but our biggest fundraiser, um, we have an athletic society at the school that helps all sports. Uh, so that's something that uh, they've been really, really good with football. And obviously, because it's so expensive with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with fees and stuff. But yeah, I see us, you know, once we get out of this uh, scenario we're in now, I think a lot of schools are just going to have to do a lot of fundraising because you're right, it is expensive. Helmets are over $500 now, but yeah, we fundraise a ton, a ton because we're, we're in an interesting social economical uh, kind of spot where we have some kids that, you know, are fine. You know, parents live in big houses and all that, but then we have a lot of kids that, um, you know, have to do a lot of fundraising to pay their, pay their fees. Great, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. I have a question. So Dave, uh, you mentioned uh, the kids have changed and, and I think that that's probably uh, accurate. Um, what is it that you do then? How do you uh, talk to your kids uh, and I wouldn't say convince, but get them to try and stay in football? The situation I'm thinking of is, uh, a lot of kids in our community actually don't need football. They do well in school. They've got parents that love them. They've got a good life. They're good people. They're all those things. Uh, I want them to play football because I want those sorts of kids on your team. But the truth is uh, they don't need football. You know, in the classic sense of Hollywood, they don't need football. So how do you convince those kids that obviously you want a part of your program, that football is something that uh, they should uh, commit to. I would, uh, I would try to sell the experience that, um, you know, even though they have parents that love them and they have money and they have good grades, which is awesome, uh, that the memories they would get from playing football, the camaraderie, I would really try to stress that, the experience stuff. And I would try to be as positive as I could. And, uh, as relentless as I could in, uh, in talking to these kids uh, as much as you can and just uh, almost, uh, um, you know, refuse to take no as an answer. Just if you can get them out for a spring, um, you know, I, I just try, try that ex uh, approach, but really sell the ex experience really, really sell the experience. And, um, you know, maybe talk about, you know, past examples of whether it's students at your school or, or, you know, any athletes out there that have played football kind of what the benefits would be it's it is hard though you're exactly right it is it's not a it's not an easy thing it's just a, it's another layer of uh, of uh, of stress that that is added to your job for sure thank you perfect dave i think we will uh wrap it up i want to appreciate uh i appreciate you having you on and uh I think I asked Tim, you're a four-time provincial champion high school, two, two tier two, tier one. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, I don't, know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but uh, we, we've, uh, we've got a few, which is, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, I can't name more than, uh, you know, one or two other schools in the entire province I'd want talking about building a high school program in Alberta. So. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. I will be, sh I recorded this properly this time, the entire um, copy, and I'll be sharing it via Google link. Spread the word. We have more registrations available. We have another 16 sessions coming up uh, the next uh, seven weeks. So Dave, any parting words? Uh, no, thanks everybody. And uh, hopefully everybody's staying safe and uh, hopefully we're, we're back to normal sooner than later here. Perfect. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks.